set our own uh, path of progress, we also, according to our self-awareness, set our barriers. Coming to that, you know, there are some people, and I may sound gendered, it is because uh, in case of women, it has been found maybe more. I would uh, trust your experience to, to speak on that. So there are people uh, who put a glass ceiling for themselves, you know, say the company, the organization identifies a resource and then grooms the resource, gives him or her additional responsibilities, you know, not only lateral, but also vertical responsibilities and to make that person to take the next level. But when the time comes, that person, because of the glass ceiling that the person set for him or herself, refuses that. Now that's a setback for the organization, I would say. You, know, you have to also retain a valuable resource like that, but also kind of adjust to the personal decision of adhering to the glass ceiling. How to turn that into a comeback? So uh, I think that's a very, very pertinent question. And I want to take two steps back before I really come to answering your question, right? Because the fact that you brought in the gender angle there, uh, I think I really want to uh, give a perspective here, which is more about uh, looking at saying, it also depends what kind of society do we come from, right? So if you're coming from a patriarchal society, uh, you will end up seeing a lot more of that play out in organizations because my firm belief is organizations are only a replica of society, right? If you come from the matriarchal pace, which a lot of states in our country also have, uh, you will pretty much see that the way it plays out and the kind of value system and the culture that those individuals bring to the organization will be very, very different, right? So having said that, I think that's the overarching belief that people really carry forward. That's number one. Number two is a lot of men, and again, I may sound very cliche here, but a lot of men say they love having strong women. But the challenge is when a strong woman behaves like a strong woman, a man doesn't know how to handle a strong woman, right? And, and therefore, what ends up happening is uh, the so-called barriers that you spoke about, which become very natural defense mechanisms or instincts start playing out. And that's when I would choose to believe at least the woman that I've had in my life, be it my mother or be it very, very close friends, I have really seen that there is no limitation that holds bar. Absolutely no limitation because in their mind, they don't think of it that way. They don't bring in gender. They don't bring in barriers. They don't bring in limitations. Okay. Because it's not just the biological aspect of looking at it. It is also the whole aspect of connecting the individual to the individual. And I think, uh, and I'm going to say this out very clearly, I think women can do a far better job at it. A lot of men who have consciously worked on their feminine side, which is the yin and the yang, also bringing in a good balance. But I think naturally women are a lot more nurturing, a lot more caring, a lot more in sync with balance than men. Because men typically go the aggressive route. And again, I'm generalizing here, but they go the aggressive route. They go the high pitch route, the aspirational route to a very different extent to make things happen. Whereas a woman would really find great amount of balance in doing the right thing. Now, having said that, uh, as you grow up the ladder, and I'm going to be extremely politically incorrect here, incorrect here, sorry. Uh, to really say that as you climb the ladder, it gets lonely at the top. And therefore, it becomes difficult to really sustain as you keep, because see, it, it's a pyramid, right? Let's accept it. It's a pyramid. And to keep getting up the pyramid, whether we call it or we don't call it, you end up chopping people along the way. And that's the only way you move up. Now, what's the basic DNA? Is the basic DNA allowing you to be as ruthless, if I may use the word, to start chopping people and moving up? Or are you very comfortable saying, okay, I am happy where I am. I think work is just a part of my life and not my entire life. And therefore, I'm very comfortable being where I am in my life right now. Maybe I am N minus two, N minus three, and I'm not really chasing that position. And on the other hand, you also have a lot of examples like the Indra Nui's, the Shikha Sharma's of the world, who have done a great amount of work. 
disproportionate representation of women on job. Yeah, and then, then if you really dig deep, and I'm sorry, I'm spending a couple of minutes more on this question because it's a very important question, very close to my heart, to say, are the Indra Nui's of the world less competitive? Have they not spent enough time with family? Of course, they've come and given interviews now post-retirement to really say, I wish I had done more. But uh, the, re the reality still is that they, they can give anybody a you know, run for their money in terms of skill and competence and leading large organizations. So therefore, I think the glass ceiling, which is where your question was, is not really outside. The glass ceiling is within your own mind. And I think if you can break that ceiling to say, my DNA, my value system allows me to do what it takes to get to a certain level, so be it. But I think the ceiling is more within. It comes with its own set of challenges, and that is gender agnostic. 